When closing lanes on a motorway, your safety is paramount. As you know, the highway is a dangerous place, but if you follow these instructions, you'll hugely decrease the chances of an accident. These procedures mean the days of having to cross live running lanes in order to facilitate a closure are now over. Firstly, we'll show you how to install and then remove a closure from lanes 1 and 2, working from the hard shoulder. Before starting the installation, carry out the required traffic counts from a safe place. Then announce your presence on the network and inform the RCC or NCC of your SRW reference and request gantry sign assistance if present. Once authorization is granted, commence installation. Begin by putting up the Workforce in Road warning sign. This may not be necessary if VMS are present and can be utilised. Erect the one mile minute work sign on the verge side only. Then erect the 800, 600, 400 and 200 yard signs. The lead-in taper cones are now placed from the footwell or low-level platform of the Traffic Management Installation Vehicle TMIV along the rib line. The Lane 1 lead-in taper is now installed and associated signs erected. The Lane 2 lead-in taper cones are now placed from the footwell of the TMIV along the Lane 1-2 line. The Lane 2 leading taper is installed and signs erected. Now install the longitudinal coning detail and install a works access point with associated signing. The longitudinal coning is placed from the footwell or low level platform of the TMIV. Finally erect a men at work end sign. Once installation is complete, carry out a maintenance inspection of the installed closure. Inform the client that the closure can now be entered via the works access. Inform the RCC or NCC that the closure is installed. Now it's time to show you how to remove the installation. Before you start, you must gain authorization from the client that you may remove the closure. Inform the RCC or NCC that the closure is to be removed and request assistance of overhead signs if available. Next, remove the works access by first taking down the 100 yard and access signs. Then close the works access. Now drive through the lane closure checking that the site is clear of all plant equipment and debris. The men at work end sign is retrieved. 
Then remove longitudinal coning to the TMIV via the footwell or low level platform of the vehicle. Once the TMIV has collected the longitudinal coning detail to the 200 meter safety zone, the TMIV will maneuver onto the hard shoulder in preparation for the collection of the lead-in tapers. Walk in the 200 meter safety zone and lead-in taper to the lane 1-2 line. Now the lead-in taper cones and associated signing is collected onto the TMIV. Once the closure is removed, you must inform the RCC or NCC. Then remove the workforce in road sign, the 1 mile, 800, 600, 400 and 200 yard wicket signs. And once everything has been removed, inform the RCC and NCC and furthermore confirm that the crew is leaving the site. Now let's move on to the lane 3-2 closure with hard shoulder installation. Again, carry out the traffic counts and inform the relevant authorities. Erect the 1 mile men at work sign and the 800, 600, 400 and 200 yard wicket signs on the verge side only. There are two options for positioning the IPV, the impact protection vehicle, for taper installation. Either the IPV and TMIV will manoeuvre into position from the hard shoulder if the traffic flow is favourable, or, as demonstrated here, the IPV travels with the flow of traffic into position protecting the TMIV for the installation of the lead-in taper. The distance between the two vehicles should always be 75 metres, plus or minus 25 metres. The 610 arrow is now erected at the start of the lead-in taper. The cones are placed in the central reservation from the footwell or low level platform of the TMIV and longitudinal coning should be placed from the TMIV. The taper is walked out by the operatives of the TMIV. The end of taper 610 block board is erected. Now the lane 2 taper cones are placed from the footwell or low level platform of the TMIV on the lane 3 2 lane line. The lane 2 lead in taper is installed and associated signs erected. Now install longitudinal coning detail and install the works access point. The longitudinal coning is placed from the footwell or low level platform of the TMIV. 
Now erect the men at work end sign. Once you have completed the installation, carry out a maintenance inspection of the installed closure. Inform the client that the closure can be entered via the works access and inform the RCC or NCC that the closure is installed. Now we will run through the procedure to remove the closure. Before you start, gain authorization from the client that you may remove the closure and then inform the RCC or NCC and request assistance of overhead signs if available. Close the works access point by removing the 100 yard and entry point signs, then close the works access. Drive through the lane closure checking that the site is clear of all plant equipment and debris. Retrieve the men at work end sign and longitudinal coning should be removed to the TMIV. Once the TMIV has collected the longitudinal coning up to the end of the taper, walk in the lane 2 taper to the 3-2 lane line and remove the coning and associated signing to the TMIV. The IPV is now positioned in preparation for the removal of the Lane 3 lead-in taper. The Lane 3 lead-in taper is walked into the central reservation. The IPV and TMIV drive around the closure via adjacent junctions and take up position in Lane 3 at the start of the taper. And the coning and associated signing is removed to the TMIV, driving with the flow of traffic. Once this is removed, you must inform the RCC or NCC, then remove the Workforce in Road sign, the One Mile Men at Work sign, and the Wicket signs. Finally, once all advances are removed, inform the RCC or NCC and announce that the crew is leaving the site. You know the motorway is a dangerous place. By following these procedures, you'll make your time on it much safer. Yeah.